Hey, good morning, or good afternoon, or maybe it's the middle of the night. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> this is the second, well, it's the third recording I've done for Bridge, but the second one I'm going to post. <laughs> the first one was just an introduction. It wasn't really necessary. Um, but I've had a couple of requests um, to recap quadratics, because some of you didn't get Algebra 2 stuff, which, you know, it's one of the requirements of the course, but it's fine. Some people miss it. You saw it, but you missed that week. We're all good. <clears throat> I'm here for you. So, what I have in front of me um, is my little notepad. Oh no, it's fuzzy. Oh, that's real fuzzy. It's because I'm super zoomed in. It's fine. <clears throat> It'll fix itself in a little bit. So, where I want. Yo, there we go. Um, I have my little notepad, and so far, Hopefully you've noticed that all quadratics are U-shaped. We call them parabolas. And most of what we do in bridge is we talk about what they mean in the real world. So um, the egg the egg catapult or whatever we did um, was one example. Maybe a pumpkin, the pumpkin throwing contest of this week or this last week was one example. So it's all about things getting launched up into the air and coming back down again. So it's mostly this kind. <clears throat> um, this week, what's going to happen is I'm going to show you a graph and at least one equation, and you have to match them. The tricky part is you have to fill in the other two equations as well. So I'm going to show you a couple examples of those. <clears throat> um, I have some graphs that I pulled from my earlier classes. It's still too bright. Oh, I, br <laughs> I made it brighter yesterday. <laughs> for a different lesson. There we go. Um, I have some graphs that I pulled from other classes that we're going to go through and find all three forms of the quadratic from these graphs. It's going to be fun. So just as a reminder, there's three forms of the equation. This is just like linear functions where there was like y equals mx plus b, but there's also the one with the y ones and the x ones, and there was the other one with like the capital letters. <laughs> Standard form vertex, or a uh, Standard form, point, slope, and slope intercept forms. Quadratics kind of have the same thing. So our three forms are standard, which is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. <clears throat> we have factored or intercept. I'm going to call them both because you might have had um, a teacher that called them factored or you might have had one that called them intercept. All right, this A is the same exact number the entire time. Girl, it is still too dark or too late. Whatever. That might be better. I don't know. We'll find out. <clears throat> um, A is the same. A won't change, and that'll, that'll help us as we go. I don't even know what's happening anymore with this thing. I should just restart, but I've already written everything. Um, okay. And standard factored and um, vertex or transformation form if you have a different math teacher. Um, that's y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. Now the key to these is that each number means something that we can see in a graph. But... The clue is that the A is the same the whole way through. A is how stretched out it is. And we saw that. Um, we saw that for the most part. A is negative 16 because that's gravity. But A could be any number. That's just what makes it come up and come straight down again instead of just going off into space. Because we have gravity here. On other planets, that number would be different. It's not negative 16 everywhere. Okay. So I have this graph here. And there's some important parts of this graph. But what I really want to do um, is actually rearrange this so that way I have more space on the thing. So give me just a little bit. I'm so sorry. All right. I'm rearranging on the other page and then I'll show you what I've been looking at. Oh, beautiful. Like that. So I wanted this down here so I could show you all my steps over here. Okay. So that's my information. Now. Um, let's start with, let's start with, um, vertex form because it's fairly simple from this quadratic to find vertex form, even though I didn't show you that. 
So vertex form is um, where the vertex is. And the vertex is the absolute bottom or absolute top of the graph. And I wish I could, oh, I can show you on my, on my mouse actually. Which graph is this? This one. The vertex is right here. The vertex is negative three, negative four. So what that tells me is that my H value is negative three and my K value is negative four. Why is this so messed up? <laughs> I don't know what's happening with this thing. It's probably just too far away and it's picking up other things. I'm so sorry. Um, so, so far I have Y equals some number times X. Here's the key, it says minus H. So we do minus negative three, which makes it a plus three. It's opposites <clears throat> with the H value. That's almost there. Now, something else that we do is we need to find this value for A. I'm to the point where I can look at a graph and tell you what A is, and I'll show you how. But I'm also, just in case that's too confusing, I'm also going to show you one other method that doesn't involve looking at the graph. So I look at the graph and I say, okay, this graph goes over one, up one. That's standard. It's standard goes over one, up one. Sometimes it'll go over one, up two. That means my A value is two. If it goes over one and up a half, my A value would be a half. So that's a, chi a, a cheaty, cheaty way to do it. Your graphs today might not have like an actual grid on it. So let's do one example without knowing that to see what I can do. So one example would be to, um, I'm going to plug in another point and solve for Y. So, <laughs> guys, my little desk is so small for this. Um, so I can pick any point that's on this graph. There are three points on the graph that are really nice. Right here, because it's zero, or sorry, negative five, zero. Right here, because it's negative one, zero. And right here, because it's zero, five. Did you see the, the, the important part in that? It's all zeros. So, um, let's just take, let's just do, um, zero, five, but any point will work. So here's my X and here's my Y cause it goes in alphabetical order. So I'm going to plug in five for Y and then I'm going to plug in zero for X. Great. I want to solve this. Don't be intimidated. I'm going to clean this little part up first. So I have 5 equals some number, and then 0 plus 3 is 3, times 3 squared, minus 4. And then let's just add the 4 to the other side. So I get 9 equals a times 9. And then if I divide by 9, a equals 1. Okay, a equals 1. So my equation is y equals x plus 3 squared minus 4. I don't need to write the 1. But here's my clue for you. This 1 won't change the entire time. If it's 1 in one equation, it'll be 1 in all the rest. If I gave you an equation, you would already know what a is. Because it's, it's right there. Do I have a highlighter? Heck yeah, I have a highlighter. A, a is in front of the x squared. It's in front of the parentheses here and it's in front of the parentheses here. Do I have a better highlighter? <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> I love, I love this. This is great. You can see it if I do this. There's the highlight. Um, okay, so that was vertex form. Now again, in your notes or in your homework today, I'm going to give you at least one of these and you just have to fill in the other two. So it won't be as hard because it won't, um, you won't need to find the A every time because A is all the way through the entire time. It's pretty cool. Okay, let's do the same exact equation or same graph, but let's find another one. Let's find, stop it. <laughs> My cat wants to be involved. Just lay down. Um, let's find factored form. So factored form, the key with factored form um, is that it tells us the x-intercepts. 
So here my x-intercepts are at negative 5 and negative 1. Those are my two x-intercepts. I should be a stickler and make you write them in points, but I'm really just identifying them on the graph. That's right here and right here. It's where the x-axis crosses the u-shape. In the real world, this would be ground level, so it's where it starts and where it hits. But I have a, I have a, a right side up u-shape today. So remember that factored form was y equals a times x minus p times x minus q. p and q are my x-intercepts. So I'm going to take this negative 5 and this negative 1. It doesn't matter what order it's in. It really doesn't matter. So I'm going to do y equals a times x. Once again, these are switched, though, because it's minus. So x minus negative 5 makes it a plus 5. And then x minus negative 1 makes it a plus 1. Opposites, it switches. Again, I can switch these and it'll be the exact same equation. It doesn't matter. It's really cool. Okay, and then a doesn't change. So if I did all that math again, plugging in a, a, a 0, um, or plugging in an xy value, and solving it, I'm going to get the same a equals 1. And I don't need to write it if it's a equals 1, so that's factored form. Okay, now standard form is just a little bit trickier, but what I like to do, because um, standard form, your c value um, is this one, so it should be a plus 5. And your a value is still 1. So, so far what we know is it's um, x squared plus something x plus 5, because that's my y-intercept. But we don't know what that middle one is. Now, there's a bunch of ways to find it. What I like to do is I like to take factored form right here. <laughs> Um, and foil it out. That's one option. I'll show you both. You can pick which one you like. I don't care. I don't care how you <laughs> how you find the answer. Just find it. But except if you're using some sort of photo math. Don't do that. They don't know what you're doing anyways. Alright, so x plus 5, x plus 1. I almost wrote 5 again. You see that mess? And then we distribute. So x times x is x squared, and x times 1 is x, and then 5 times x is 5x, and 5 times 1 is 5. And then I just put together my like terms. So these two go together, and I get x squared plus 6x plus 5. So that's what that number is. You could also um, expand um, the, the last form, vertex form, but another way people do it is that um, the axis is symmetry, because <laughs> why not just throw a new word at you right at the end, is um, negative b over 2a. And the axis symmetry is this line right down the middle where I could fold the graph in half and it would be the same. So that line down the middle in this case is negative 3. So negative b over 2a has to equal negative 3. And I know that a is 1. So negative b, that was a weird b, over 2 times 1 equals negative 3. So negative b over 2 equals negative 3. And I could I could say what divided by 2 is negative 3 would be 6, but um, I can also multiply by 2 and make, if it's negative b equals negative 6, then a positive b will equal positive 6, and it's the same number as before. <clears throat> so that's your call. I'm out. <laughs> I don't care. Um, but those are the three forms. That's all you need to know for your um, assignment today because what it's going to show you is a graph kind of like this 
this might even be one of them. I didn't check ahead of time, <laughs> um, but with no, with no lines. And then you have to match it. There's going to be a set of three equations. Let me put my box around this. There's going to be a set of three equations. One of them's going to be filled in and the other two are probably going to be blank. They might be partially filled in and you have to match them. So the goal is, is that you're going to find things like the y-intercept or the vertex or the x-intercept. And then that's how you're going to match the graph to the equations. Okay. Um, I have a feeling that you're going to want me to do at least one more, maybe from a different perspective. Get out of here. That was not my cat. I gently pushed him to the side and he knocked a box off this, um, this ottoman next to me. That's been my storage and his little nap spot. So I didn't, but <laughs> my cat didn't like fall off because of me or anything. Okay. So let's find another one. If I just scroll down, oh, so close. Beautiful. There we go. <coughs> I just didn't cough into my elbow. Okay, so what we're going to do for this one um, is you can pause this video here and see if you can find all three forms and see if you get stuck. Um, again, the forms are standard y equals ax squared. Um, factored oh not H P and Q doesn't matter but might confuse some people and vertex so you can pause this and try to find all three forms for this graph um, I'm I'm not going to like sit here and wait because it's YouTube, so you can just pause me. Um, or you can just play along with me. So pause. Welcome back. <laughs> um, let's do this. I, I love using vertex form, but let's just start with factored form to start with something different. But it won't matter. You'll get the same equations either way. Um, so let's just start with factored. Um, I need to find the x-intercepts, which are, I have a screen of eight total graphs up, so I'm just trying to figure out which one is on the actual screen, which is one um, and three. That's really bad math. It looks like the point one, three, which is not the case, but it's fine. Um, so what we're going to do is we have y equals some number times x minus 1 and x minus 3. If you wrote y equals some number times x minus 3 times x minus 1, you're, you have it. That, the order doesn't matter. I should do different brackets. <laughs> this is a different part of the problem. Okay, now I have to find my a value. Now, you can see this right here. It goes over 1, down 1. So it's probably a negative one. But let me just show you officially with some math numbers. I can't use these points. I've already used them. No, that's not true. I could totally use them. It's fine, though. I'll use this um, 0, negative 3 right here. Great. So um, negative 3 equals a times 0 minus 1 times 0 minus 3. Let's just see what happens. Negative 3 equals a times negative 1 times negative 3. Well, negative 1 times negative 3 is positive 3. So negative 3 equals a times 3. My cat's trying to climb up. <laughs> you guys, I'm so sorry. He's trying to climb up my, um, my desk. Divide by 3. a equals negative 1. Hey, we did it. So y equals negative, I don't need to write the number one. <clears throat> you can, it's not a big deal. Um, x minus one, x minus three. And that's gonna be the same a value for every problem. Okay, 
so that was factored form. Uh, let's do vertex form, just because I feel like it. My vertex is um, 2, 1. So that's my hk. So I have y equals a times x minus 2 squared plus 1. I want you to notice that the first number switches to be opposite, but the last one stays the same. So just be careful with that. And then a is still negative 1. So y equals negative x minus 2 squared plus 1. Can you check your work by going to Desmos and graphing both of these and seeing if it matches? Absolutely. Do it. I didn't set that up, but you can do it. <laughs> Normally I have like a screen ready for this. I didn't think about it. And standard. We already know y equals negative x squared plus something x plus, oops, minus 3. <laughs> not plus 3. And I know it's minus 3 because that's my y-intercept right here. But I don't know the middle number yet. So, your choice. I can take my um, factored form and foil it. For this case where there's a number in front, you can either distribute it to everything at the end or distribute it to one thing now. I'm just going to put it in this one. So negative x plus 1 times x minus 3. But your other option is to do all the foiling and then at the end distribute the negative to everything. Those are the only two options. You can't distribute it to everything here because then it will cancel itself out. So I get negative x squared plus 3x plus x minus 3. So negative x squared plus 4x minus 3. And then again, my other option is to do negative b over 2a equals 2. So negative b over 2 times negative 1 equals 2. Negative b over negative 2 equals 2. Multiply it. Oh, I'm running out of space. <clears throat> negative b uh, equals negative 4. If I multiply by negative 2. And then if negative b equals negative 4, positive b equals positive 4. Got it. So I can do it both ways. doesn't matter. Don't do both. <laughs> that would be silly to do both. All right. Um, these were super simple in terms of the a value either being positive 1 or negative 1. I can't guarantee that for you um, in your entire life. Oh, my mouse is in the wrong spot, but I was trying to get it to be in the right spot. Um, let me just sh show you thusly. I don't know. No, that one's fine. You can't see what I'm doing, but I can see what I'm doing. Because this is a cool program. I get two different screens. And one is what I'm going to show you, and one is what I'm showing you. Okay, so like this one, I'm not going to do all the steps for this one. I just want to talk about the A value. The a value here, because it goes over and not down a full thing, probably a half. So it's probably negative one half. Um, this is one that you either just say it's negative one half and roll with it, see if it works, or um, plug in another point and see if it's negative one half. And this one's not a half. That one looks like maybe a third or a fourth. That would be one you want to do the math on. So, um, I sincerely hope that I helped you. Um, if you need more, let me know. But I'm hoping that this helps you do your work today, or this week, or whenever you get to it. Because we all know that you don't get to it right away sometimes. <laughs> I, have, I have, I think, five kids that just do it on Monday when I drop it. And then I have kids that do it, um, like, Sunday night. So, <laughs> we're all spread out. And I love all of you. So, and I have some kids that aren't doing this at all probably don't have internet. Please find a way to email me and let me know. I got you. I'll, I mailed, I mailed booklets to your house. <laughs> Two kids, one kid I've never heard from and one kid um, asked me specifically and I mailed those out. So hopefully that helps. I'm talking to the choir right now because all of you have internet access, obviously. Hey, have a beautiful week. Um, say hi to Rocket for me. <laughs>
He's being so nice. Um, and I will see you next time. Okay, bye!